curious minds welcome to project excellence prodigy in today's episode we are continuing our discussion on project schedule management we will dive into the different techniques used for sequencing activities in a project activity sequencing is a critical step in project scheduling where activities are arranged in the order in which they must be performed it establishes the relationships and dependencies among activities to ensure a logical progression through the project timeline understanding the flow and dependency between tasks help in the effective management of resources timelines and potential risks normally there are four types of sequencing techniques which are commonly used in project scheduling so first one is precedence diagramming method pdm second one is arrow diagramming method adm third is dependency determination and integration and fourth is leads and lags let's discuss each one of them in detail the precedence diagramming method pdm is a technique used for constructing a schedule model in which activities are represented by nodes and are graphically linked by one or more logical relationships to show the sequence in which the activities are to be performed it is also called as aon technique activity on nodes in pdm there are four types of dependencies or logical relationships between activities finish to start start to start finish to finish and start to finish so the first one is finish to start fs this is the most common relationship the predecessor activity must finish before the successor activity can start if we see this picture here the activity a is the building of foundation and activity b is constructing of walls so we must finish activity a predecessor before we start the construction of walls activity b which is successor second relationship is start to start ss the predecessor activity must start before the successor activity can start here so for a software project if this is the design work activity a is design work and activity b is the development work so design work activity a must begin before development work can start another example in many software projects testing can start as soon as a portion of the code has been written so if you are working in sprints the testing phase can start as soon as the code begins in other way we can say testing only can start once the code coding has been begin third relationship is finish to finish ff the predecessor activity must finish before the successor activity can finish so similar example for a software project the testing activity b this one only can finish once this activity a coding activity is finished another example we can say the if quality inspection which is activity b successor activity cannot finish until the complete painting activity a is finished the last relationship is start to finish this type of relationship is rarely used the predecessor activity must start before the successor activity can finish for example the night shift b cannot finish until the day shift a starts so if you have noticed this relationship is bit confusing it flips the usual flow we see in other relationships activity a is still considered as predecessor even though it starts after activity b so let me clarify it actually the precedence means that the predecessor activity is one who drives the relationship and successor activity is driven 
if we see in finish to start relationship activity b is dependent on activity a so activity a is the driver similar happens in the case of start to start and finish to finish so naturally it is happening that the predecessor activity happens first and the successor activity depends on the predecessor finishing to begin the flow is straight forward the predecessors come first and the successor comes after for these three relationship however in a start to finish relationship the naming of predecessor and successor is based not on the order in which the activity is start or finish but on which activity controls the dependency means which control or drive the dependency similar precedence rule which is applicable for these three relationships so here the predecessor a this is the activity that drives or triggers the dependency the start of the day shift a is what allows the night shift b to finish so the a drives the relationship and the night shift b is called the successor because it finishes only after the day shift a starts next is arrow diagramming method adm or activity on arrow aoa it is a network diagramming technique used in project scheduling to visually represent the sequence of project activities in this method activities are represented by arrows and the nodes represent the events or milestone that signify the start or finish of one or more activity adm was historically one of the first method used for project scheduling and it was closely associated with the cpm that time particularly in the construction and manufacturing industry however now it has been largely replaced by the pdm precedence diagramming method or we call it aon because the aoa has many limitations so each arrow here represents a specific task or activity that must be completed in the project the length of the arrow does not represent the duration of the activity it's only the graphical representation the node at the tail of the arrow represent the starting event and the node at the head of the arrow represent the finishing event adm sometimes requires to use the dummy activities which is represented by the dashed arrow so dummy activities do not consume time or resources and are used to maintain clarity in the network when multiple dependencies exist adm allows for only one type of logical relationship between activities finished to start only one type no ss no ff no sf so that's the biggest limitations of using the adm next is dependency determination and integration this technique focuses on identifying the dependencies between activities and integrating them into the project schedule there are four main types of dependencies mandatory dependencies we call it hard logic so these are the dependencies that are inherent in the nature of the work they represent activities that must be done in a specific order due to the physical or technical constraints like we must construct the walls before installing the windows so these are enforced by nature of the work they cannot be avoided and this often includes finish to start relationship second one is discretionary dependencies soft logic or preferred logic these are determined based on best practices or preferences but are not strictly required discretionary dependencies can be modified or adjusted to optimize the schedule so for example we may choose to design an entire system before beginning the development even though we could do both in parallel so 
दीज ऑफर्स अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर शेड्यूल ऑप्टिमाइजेशन बाय ऑल्टरिंग द सिक्वेंसेज नेक्स्ट इज एक्सटर्नल डिपेंडेंसीज दीज डिपेंडेंसीज इन्वॉल्व रिलेशनशिप्स बिटवीन प्रोजेक्ट एक्टिविटीज एंड एक्सटर्नल फैक्टर्स और इवेंट्स दैट आर आउटसाइड द प्रोजेक्ट टीम्स कंट्रोल सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल the government approval or vendor delivery times that can affect the sequence of activities a software development project might depend on the completion of hardware production from an external supplier internal dependencies these involve dependencies within the project where one activity is reliant on the completion of another within the project so one team must finish a task before another team within the same project can start for example the marketing team can only begin promoting the new software once the software development team has finalized the product features so this internal dependency arises from project specific decisions and planning but it's not dictated by any external or mandatory rule the marketing team could technically start promoting the product at any time but they choose to wait for the finalization to avoid promoting the incorrect features next activity sequencing technique is leads and lags this technique helps to adjust the timing between activities by adding leads acceleration or lags delay to relationships between tasks lead allows an acceleration of the successor activity it means the successor task starts before its predecessor finishes it shortens the schedule if we see here the task a which is the predecessor laying pipes in trenches and task b the filling trenches so in a traditional finish to start relationship we will wait until all the pipes are laid before we start filling the trenches but if we introduce lead here so we don't need to wait for all pipes to be laid instead we can start filling the trench in the areas where the pipes have already been laid so what will be the impact it will shorten the schedule since we start filling trenches before pipe laying is finished so both activities overlap we can see here so this will reduce the overall duration of the project another thing this will introduce some risk also for example in this case if something goes wrong while laying the remaining pipes so it might require us to undo some of the filling that has already been completed come to the lag a lag is the amount of time a successor activity will be delayed with respect to a predecessor activity it can be applied to various relationships between tasks mainly finish to start fs and start to start ss relationship so here for example the task b installing the furniture has a finish to start relationship with task a painting the walls but there needs to be a delay to let the paint dry so there is two days lag for activity b to start so what will be the impact the overall project duration is extended because furniture installation can only begin after two days of drying time another thing we have to adjust the scheduling why the lag forces a gap in the schedule which means we need to adjust our planning to ensure all the resources are available after the lag period risk will be reduced there are chances because if we see in this particular case it prevents damage to the furniture or avoid any kind of potential rework which could cause the further delays another scenario here the task a trenching work has a start to start relationship with task b laying cables but there needs to be a delay lag to ensure that enough trenches are dug to make the cable laying work efficient and safe to lay the cables 
So effective activity sequencing is essential for project success. By mastering the techniques like PDM, ADM, dependency determination and leads and lags, the project managers can create well-structured schedules that optimize resources, reduce risk and ensure timely delivery of project outcomes. So that's all for today. I hope you found this helpful. Before you go, please like, subscribe and share the Project Silence Prodigy channel. Your support really matters to me. Namaste, goodbye, Sampai Jumpa.